Starting off this video a lot like all the rest, I am out in front of my little garage working on the 240. I'm finally getting to install that villain's handbrake today. It is freaking Friday and I've been trying to do this all week and this might end up being like a two day video because I might run out of time today. I've been trying to uh, catch up with my brackets. I did a bunch of Black Friday sales. I got a lot of orders and I went out of stock twice and now I'm out of stock for a third time. So I'm trying to keep up with those orders but on the other hand, I am tapping uh, into the shift tunnel for some new hardware you guys can see there. The plate for the handbrake, the mounting plate, it's pretty thick and I was having a, an issue trying to mount the plate along with the rubber grommet or rubber boot for the shifter and then that plate, the factory hardware just wasn't long enough. This one was long enough but for some reason the previous owner only had three in here and these two are shorter. I went ahead and grabbed some some hardware. I just uh, ran a drill bit through these. I've got to tap them. Once they're tapped, you guys can see it's a little wet right here. It's weak, leaking from this boot right there. It's got like a little split. But, uh, sorry, that distracted me and I figured somebody was going to comment and say something. I'm probably going to order one of those, but I want to get this all mounted up and secure. That way I can start doing a little bit of skids. Start practicing. I've got my figure eights and my, you know, my left and right donuts down. I just want to start uh, learning how to control the car better and obviously I need to start learning how to pull that handbrake and put that clutch in at the same time. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited. I'm going to stop talking. We're going to uh, jump right to work. Let me get these tapped in there. I'm going to mock up everything, set it in there, and then I'll show you guys right after that. The welder is out. That is when you know something is up, guys. No, it, I'm just playing. It's not really that big of a deal, but it has been a little pain in the neck so let me explain really quick uh, it's nothing on the villain side the villain side the the plate mocks up perfectly it lines up awesome the back one is a little off back here you can't really see it like you can see the two screws in there the one two there's supposed to be a third one back there but it's kind of like gapped off the back of the the transmission tunnel anyways the main issue i had was that the previous owner he only had one two and then the third one was like halfway in there. I pulled one of them out, went to the parts store, and I got some hardware to replace the factory hardware because it wasn't long enough. Got this hardware here. I ran them up in these top ones and I had no issues, but when I went to go do these back ones, this back left one, the whole entire uh, mounting plate with the little threads like from the factory, it broke through the sheet metal and just spun. Excuse me, guys. This one it went all the way down and then broke it and then fell through and got stuck. So what I had to do was go get some hardware, run them up through the holes upside down. Oh, I flicked off the camera. <laughs> My bad, that was funny. <laughs> uh, I had to run them through the, the, the transmission tunnel and then I tack welded them in place, sat the villain's plate on top of it, made sure everything lined up, bolted it down, and then I went back over and re-welded everything. And then on top of that, you guys can see that I laid down a couple tack welds so that this uh, sheet metal for the unibody that's laid over each other has a little bit of uh, reinforcement and some, some structural integrity so that way when I'm pulling on the handbrake, I don't have that issue. Now you guys see that my handbrake is hitting my factory emergency brake. What I did was remove the factory hardware, this guy here. I moved the handbrake over about eighth of an inch and I ran a self-tapping screw in there after I had uh, just pre-drilled a, a small little hole and so now when I drop my handbrake it clears everything so it's functional when I'm driving but then when I want to park my car whoops sorry guys it locks into place and it still clears my shifter the clutch in take it out so first Second, third, fourth, and fifth. So you guys can see this awesome, awesome fitment in between everything. Because I really wanted to keep my handbrake, or my emergency brake, excuse me. So that's been what I've been doing. I was kind of wanting to make this like a step-by-step. -step. I talked to the villains guys, and I really wanted to do like a step-by-step -step how to install this. But it's just been a little tedious and a little frustrating with those, those bolts that stripped out in the transmission tunnel. I'm going to move on to mocking up the rear end now. I'm going to start getting these things in place and then I need to also shave down some of these banjo bolts. Uh, I'm going to throw in a picture really quick. Actually, let me just show you. Hold on. Alright, so if you notice, 
this is the Nissan line that I got from the junkyard and you see the gap and how the brake line has some play in it. The banjo bolt is threaded all the way in as far as it'll go. So what I'm going to have to do is take a banjo bolt and some of these nuts that I bought here, thread them together and trim off about an eighth inch of the threads. I'm a little nervous. I'm going to try to use it with the flat wheel, shave off some of the threads, and then I'm going to, you know, bevel it to see if I can get it to thread into the caliper. I went to a couple different auto parts stores and I searched the junkyard. I looked at Volkswagens, Subarus, some of the newer Hondas, all of the Nissan Sentras, Ultimas, and Maximas, and all of the M10 by 1.0 banjo bolts are too long. The Volkswagen would work, but sadly the thread pitch is different. There's a coarse thread and Nissan has a fine thread. I'm sure I can find it online and I'm sure I could go to a specialty place, but more seat time taken away from me because I've, I've been waiting to do this handbrake setup so I could go out and not necessarily drift the compound, but I want to practice and get the feel and kind of start understanding what I'm going to need to learn in the basics and transitions and blah, 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 blah. So, yes, that's my process. I, I knew it was going to be kind of hectic, but this is starting to get a little frustrating. Other than that, I'm going to just keep on wrenching and uh, hope for the best. Let's hope we don't have any more issues. I wanted to show you guys what I was like exactly talking about. This is the factory hardware that retains the shift boot and that shift plate. And this is the piece of threaded metal that was like... I don't think it was welded, maybe spot welded into the sheet metal of the car and obviously it's cross threaded and that clearly shows why he only had three of the four bolts in there and essentially screwed me out of my, you know, fix or my upgrade, whatever you want to call it. But now you guys have a better idea of what I was talking about. Pull the wheel off. What we're going to be doing next is pulling off the caliper and then we're going to be pulling off the rotor and we have to pull off the uh, wheel hub because we're going to have to uh, grind down some of the areas on the knuckle to clear the uh, secondary caliper. Let's go ahead and do that really quick guys. Alrighty guys, so it's been quite a bit of headache. I'm gonna pause my music real quick. Uh, just fighting to get this thing off. It was just clumped with grease and all kinds of just nastiness. Uh, it's all over this rag. You guys can kind of see it there. It's, uh, it's probably a combination of burned up rubber that has been melted and then stuck all inside of here. Guy just never cleaned it out. And then also the fact that it's probably some wheel bearing grease and stuff. But I've got the wheel bearing off, I've got this brake shield off, this is the second beetle caliper mount right here, and that's where it will sit. Now Villains is wanting you to grind down, there's some letters right here that you're going to have to take a flap wheel to and grind this down, and they also want you to take this area down so that way the beetle caliper can clear. So I've got my grinder somewhere over here, my grinder with a flap wheel. And I'm going to grind it stuff down and run it smooth. And I'm going to start uh, throwing everything back together in reverse order. I wish I had filmed it, but as you guys can see, it is dark out here. And I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to do like a full teardown on the other side tomorrow morning. So you guys can get a better idea because I feel really bad. And I wanted this more so to be a how-to video so people can have an understanding of how this villain kit's worked. I've looked at a couple different videos and not everybody includes the uh, in-depth how to take everything apart so so I have light in the garage and I figured I might as well just show you guys this because this is kind of an important step 
But if you see here, this is a factory Nissan uh, banjo bolt. This is out of a, like Nissan Sentra or Maxima or something that I pulled out of the junkyard. And you guys can kind of get the idea of the length of it. And now this one that I'm holding up in my right hand next to it, as you can see, it is, I mean, almost, I mean, I think it's more than a, an eighth inch. I think it's that's about a quarter inch uh, that I've had to shave off this banjo bolt because the issue, like I showed you in the last clip, you put a crush washer there, the brake line, another crush washer, you thread it in. and it bottoms out. I'll even put my ratchet on to show you guys. Now that's hand snug and you can see how much play it's got. So what I did, I talked to the guys over at Villains and he was like, hey look, I know it can be a little sketchy but if you take a nut, thread it on to the bolt, and then take your flat wheel on a grinder and slowly work your way down and grind away all the threads and leave yourself like a small beveled edge like you guys can see on this one and you can see there's a crush washer on it I'm going to peel it off really quick I'm going to slide it over through the brake line put the other crush washer on thread it into the brake and tighten it up with the ratchet And voila. There you have it. Made my banjo bolt work with my brake line. Now let's pray that it doesn't leak because I'm going to be really upset if it leaks. Because I was pretty proud of myself for getting that. I'm going to go ahead and knock out this other one. I'll leave it to you so you guys can kind of watch me. Maybe just a little bit more. Now I grabbed quite a few of these bolts from the junkyard. You can see them laying over there. I grabbed like six of them in case I messed this up. Just to be safe. Alright guys. It's going to get loud. Hold on. Of course, it's going to be a little hot, so be careful. I burn myself all the time, so I'm kind of used to it. Go ahead and slide a crush washer on. Oops, you already got one. Sorry about that, guys. The other one on. Thread her in there and see how she does. Now, it's kind of a trial and error. You might get it right the first time. I've had to trim them down like three times now to get it to fit. Like as you can see, see it's a little loose still. It's kind of a trial and error thing. Just pull it back off. Drop it again. And repeat the same process. Run your nut back on there. And get back to trimming. So, yep. Let's see if we can get it this time around. We just shaved off a good bit there. Crush washer, brake line, crush washer, and bam. Throw it in there. Just a little bit more guys, it's still a little loose. I'm going to show you guys when I'm done. So of course the last cut that I make that I didn't film so I can, you know, get it done and show you guys was the one that actually worked. But uh, you can see the caliper and the brake line are not moving around, not swinging around, nothing's free to move. So that is our cheap little fix to get around our banjo bolts. All right. Back to uh, mounting up this brake assembly. 
just to give you guys a better idea of the mock-up this is not the final product this is just uh, lightly bolted up with a few bolts and you can see the axle nuts not even on there but it's pretty freaking sweet I am stoked this is this is like my little motivation I was getting really upset because it, it like was fighting me and just little things weren't working out but this definitely makes me smile this is sick Say what's up. Say what's up. Come on. Say what's up. Let me hear you speak. Say what's up. Come on. Come on. Are we all done here? Let me hear you speak. Let me hear you speak. Good girl. All right, guys. We are uh, all done here. Uh, sorry, I had to turn my little screen around. We're going to wrap up for the night. The car did awesome. I know I only installed one caliper tonight, but I wanted to take it on a little drive and uh, see if anything was rubbing, touching, scraping, and I had no issues. So tomorrow I'm going to uh, do like more of a step-by-step -step so everyone can like kind of get an idea and an understanding on how to install the system. It's not that hard, it can just be a little confusing, and uh, I did it right off the bat, and I had a couple issues here and there, so I know it would help some people if, uh, if I did a video, but I'm getting like light pollution here. It's like light over here, not light over there. Now I'm all blurred out. Sorry, guys. Anyways, I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Um, I may have to make this a two-part video. I don't know. So if I do, this might be the end of it. So I'm just going to like film a closer really quick if I have to. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. If not, if I don't make it a two-part video, I will just see you guys tomorrow. So deuces. I'm always in the